All right, I, I get this question a lot, actually, and uh, thank you, Delilah. So I'm just going to actually read what I wrote in response to this. I said, I have a whole series of emails with John from uh, Genetic Matrix, and this is true. I have emails going back years. Um, not that they were over the years, but there was a period of a few weeks or maybe even a couple months where John and I were emailing back and forth, and this would have been in 2018, something like that. And so I wrote, I got to the bottom of it. First line, smiley face. Maybe I can do a YouTube video on it. Well, here we are. But uh, the short version is he is just wrong. The longer version is a good topic for a deep dive into how time zones work. Maybe I can do a YouTube later where I just read through Wikipedia pages and describe how they work first. Uh, I'm not going to do that. You can read through the Wikipedia pages if you want, but you know, I, I, I don't think time zones are that hard of a concept. Uh, I'll just say right now that the, the kind of fundamental purpose of a time zone is to adjust a local time separate from what we call universal time. Universal time, there's no time zones. So universal time is the actual atomic clock time where we have atomic clocks counting the milliseconds, counting the nanoseconds, and so on. And we have like extremely high accuracy, and this is for scientific purposes. And anytime you're querying the NASA Jet Propulsion Labs uh, API and you want to know where the planets are at a given point in time and you want to know about your querying space and all this, you need to query it in UTC. None of these APIs know what local time zone is, right? They know UTC military time only. So you query it with 11.52, that's going to be 11.52 a.m. Or you query it with 23.10, that's going to be 11.10 p.m. Whatever you query it with, that's a.m. or p.m. or, you know, that time and that date and so on, that is an exact time and date. So this is the first thing to understand. There is a universal time. And universal time is set to Greenwich Meridian you know, standard time there. So that's plus minus zero local time. So local time and universal time happen to be identical in Greenwich. But when you move away from Greenwich, you begin uh, to adjust for the local time. And the adjustments for local time are typically you, you divide the equator roughly into 24 and you you depending which division into 24 you're in you're either plus or minus up to 12 or you know you're either plus 12 or you're minus 12 or you're plus 11 or minus 11 or plus 10 or so on or plus 1 or plus 0 like if you're in Greenwich right so this is this is how time zones work so the purpose of time zones first of all is to get to universal time you want to get to universal time so you know as a scientist exactly what time if you want to be able to correlate for instance to an earthquake was happening at this part of the planet and you want to see exactly what was happening in this other part of the planet at the exact same time. Say you're a scientist and that's really important to you. Okay, well, you need to convert to universal time. How do you do this? Well, you find out what universal time it occurred at. If you're trying to find out when an earthquake occurred, those are probably stored in universal time. They're probably not even stored in local time. But say you're trying to find out when a historical earthquake occurred from many, many years ago. We'll say it's in the 1970s in, in Spain or whatever. You're going to want to look in Spain in that local area and go, okay, what time zone did, were they in? Were they in plus zero at on April 12th, 1972? Or were they in plus one April 12th, 1972? Because Spain actually changed their time zone, right? So I'm going to continue reading what I wrote here, and this will give you a little context then. It's easy to show why he is confused. This is John from Genetic Matrix. John observes what he calls natural time zones, this is a direct quote from him, which are equal divisions of the globe into 24. It makes sense at first glance, but then it falls apart, because you see, time zones are set locally. For instance, Texas didn't observe daylight savings until 1966, you know, and it spread out. It took time, like it took five years for all of Texas to observe DST. Franco changed the time zone of Spain in the 70s, or maybe in 1970, I think. So, or maybe in the 60s. Uh, you know, I, it's been a while since I've looked into all this stuff, so the facts might not be... If you're really curious about this, you can look it up and you can... I have undefined head nausea, so part of my deconditioning is refusing to think about things that don't matter to me. It doesn't matter to me the exact date that Franco changed the time zone of Spain. What matters is the fact that he did it. And the fact that he did it leads to confusion for people like John from Genetic Matrix because John does not observe that change. He uses the pre-Franco changed date because he says that is the natural time zone that it naturally falls in. And so, see, John really misunderstands time zones. He thinks 
that his charts are correct because he thinks that he found this huge flaw in everybody else's logic and reasoning and he thinks that the actual planetary positions and that this night sky at the time of birth in actual physical reality is different than what is being depicted on Jovian Archive and on other websites. And he thinks that his depiction is the only accurate one. This is the level of insanity of this man. That Ra himself was doing the wrong charts, right? This guy thinks that he's right and Ra was wrong. You know somebody else who's also a manifester who's also like this? Richard Mason. Richard Mason, right? These, these not self-manifestors. And I'm not blaming any nine-centered, you know, true self living your design manifestors out there. But these not self-manifestors are doing so much harm through so much negative impact, through so much lack of informing. Nowhere does John from Genetic Matrix say, this is my opinion that disagrees with Ra, that disagrees with Jovian, that disagrees with everyone else in the entire world, that disagrees with NASA scientists, that disagrees with Department of Defense, that disagrees with international standards bodies and organizations, that disagrees with literally the entire world of how time zones are calculated. He has zero support for his own completely original, completely wrong interpretation of time zone algorithms that he figured out on himself. He's not standing on the shoulders of giants. He's standing on his own two feet, far, far, far below the standard that we should expect in 2022 of education and of insight and intelligence and rationality because he's being completely irrational and thinks that his genius way of changing how time zones are calculated is fixing all these wrong charts. And they're not wrong charts. He's actually generated, by my estimation, over one million wrong charts for people. That is over one million charts that tell people either they're a different type, or they have different channels activated, or they have different PHS. All of this is inexcusable. I mean, John from, from sorry, John from Genetic Matrix should be banned for life from any interaction in human design simply because of the irreparable harm that he has done by generating wrong charts as a manifester without informing, without telling people that they're wrong, without telling people that they use his own algorithm that is completely different and wrong, and that even if he said, I think I'm using my algorithm, I think my algorithm's correct, here's how it differs from other people's algorithms, that would still be informing. That would still be informing, and then people could make their own informed decision, and they could go, oh, now I understand. John from Genetic Matrix is using his own weird algorithm. That's why my chart is different. Instead, Jonah ends up having to get three messages a week from people saying, why is my chart different on Genetic Matrix? You know, John from Genetic Matrix needs to change his algorithm or make an official proclamation explaining why he's using quote unquote natural time zones, a concept that he made up that doesn't exist, and explaining why he's generating the wrong charts. But he won't do that. He's a manifester who uses silence as a way to create confusion and to maintain his authority and power. He's a very seven-centered, focused manifester. I could tell that from our email interactions. Same as Richard Mason. I mean, same as most people in the world, right? We're very indoctrinated by this seven-centered inheritance. So I continued, I said, um, so all the time zone databases in the world, like the official TZ used by Jovian, and you know the TZ databases used by NASA, and Department of Defense, the government, scientists, all of these are more or less correct depending on how accurate their historical data is. I'm not saying that the time zone databases are perfect because there is no perfect historical data. There are simply birth certificates where we cannot unequivocally state what the exact universal time is for that birth certificate because we do not know if that hospital was observing daylight savings time or not in that time. For instance, right in the beginning of when Texas began to adopt daylight savings time. I had this exact case a few weeks ago where someone was born in Texas in 1966. We don't know if their hospital observed daylight savings time or not. My advice to her was to contact the hospital, contact the historical records department, contact historians who had done research on Texas in the area, and to try to document the first ever observed daylight savings time proclamations at that hospital. That is, the memorandums that went out telling everybody that they had to observe daylight savings time. And even then, there's no guarantee that they did, right? So we sometimes just don't know. We just don't know. And you have to do what is called chart rectification, which is when you don't have an exact birth time. And that's when the birth time is not recorded properly, meaning like it's recorded as, you know, 2 p.m., 2.15, 2.18 p.m. Uh, in, you know, March 5th, 1966 in Galveston, Texas. And you go, well, I, well, did Galveston, Texas observe daylight savings time? Or I guess maybe March is a bad example because that um, 
But you know what I mean? You can find some like edge case, which is like the day that daylight savings time began to be observed. And nobody really knows if everyone observed it then or if it took time to spread and who observed it and who didn't. And there were all of these one hour discrepancies around that time. So if you were born in one of those chop zones, sorry to disappoint you, you are not going to be able to know unequivocally exactly what your birth time is. You're going to be able to know your birth time is either this, if they were observing daylight savings time, or that if they weren't. And you're going to have to look at those two birth times and see which fits better. It's, it's chart rectification, right? So I said, um, these databases are more or less correct depending on how accurate their historical data is, because they take vast amounts of historical data, like when a particular county in Texas began observing daylight savings time, when Franco changed the time in Spain, and when different areas of Spain began to observe the time change that, that he implemented, and so on. So you take a given birth time, date, and location, and you convert it back to universal time, to UTC. Well, John of Genetic Matrix does this conversion, but instead of converting using a time zone database, he converts using latitude and longitude, dividing the globe into 24 equal slices, one for each hour. And he arbitrarily assigns them plus or minus one hour for each segment away from the Greenwich Meridian. See? If you follow what I wrote so far, you see the problem here. Say I was born in Spain in 1965 at 3 p.m. You were born in Spain in 1975 at 3 p.m. Well, Spain changed time zones between those two times you know, the same day of the year, you know. Um, so technically, one was born at UTC 15, the other was born at UTC 14, you know. One was born at 3 p.m. in UTC, one was born at 2 p.m. in UTC. But John's site calculates these wrongly and puts them both at 3 p.m., ignoring the change of time that Franco implemented, saying, quote, it's not natural. And, quote, I only observe natural time zones, not human-made time zones. This is direct quote from John of Genetic Matrix. I only observe natural time zones. You know, what's funny is you'll see how, um, for instance, um, Richard Mason. You know, Richard Mason is, uh, uh, he's another manifester, and he also talks so much about natural. He says he's observing the natural night sky, the natural constellations, the natural stars, the natural order, that sidereal astrology and sidereal human design is natural, and that human design is unnatural. Well, I'm afraid to say that this term natural and unnatural is completely arbitrarily applied with no actual syntactic value at all, i.e. both Richard Mason and John are stating meaningless statements that are meant to sound profound or meant to add um, import, but they're not, and they're completely meaningless. So, you know, for them to say it's natural or not, it's all arbitrary. And to say that one is less arbitrary than the other is not true. Our goal lest you forget, is to get back to universal time, which is also arbitrary, but at least it allows us to see when the exact same time occurred and what occurred before and what occurred after. That's all we care about. The only reason we're using time markers anyway is to be able to tell what happened at the same time and to put things into an order or a sequence by time. This happened first, then this, then this, then this. It's the only reason we need it. So we really just need an ever-increasing integer that starts at zero and goes to infinity. And that's actually what we have and it counts in milliseconds. And you can use special nomenclature and special metadata if you need to get to nanoseconds and femtoseconds and stuff like that. But the general clock on a regular computer is, is milliseconds this epoch. And it counts a thousand times per second, and it's simply a number that continues to increase. And the number goes up by a thousand every second. And it goes through every subdivision of a thousand too. I mean, you could actually get, by using floats, you could get as, as granular as you want. But anyway, uh, this is all just the technicality of how time works in computing and in science and in basically just human for human life. And time works in this way in universal time. And then we have to translate back to universal time so that we don't get into all the confusion about, well, it's 2 p.m. here and it's 3 p.m. there, but the time zone changed. But here, I mean, even his natural divisions into 24 also has problems. What happens if you're born exactly on the longitudinal line? How wide is the longitudinal line? It can't be zero. Is it a mile wide? Well, what happens if you're born within that mile? I mean, his whole system, his whole thing is he's trying to come up with a flawless system for time zones. Well, it's only flawless if every hospital in the world observes it. It's only flawless if every midwife in the world jots down the time using his nomenclature. Then we can all agree, but then why don't they just write down the time in UTC? At that point, you can just write down the time in UTC. Because you see, local time zones are local for a reason. They're local because they match the needs, requirements, customs of that particular culture. That's why we have to translate from local back to UTC. So if local time changes, 
like with daylight savings time or if they eliminate daylight savings time. There's a movement to eliminate daylight savings time completely. Well, that'll be another change. Well, John is not going to update genetic matrix when that happens, right? He's not going to because he doesn't update it for any historical change. He calls these human-made changes. Well, obviously they're not human-made changes. They're obviously, I mean, what does that even mean? Like, these are systems, uh, This the, these are systems of timekeeping, and you can either observe the rules of the systems of timekeeping, or you can make up your own rules. John makes up his own rules, which results in inaccuracies. I can't say it any more clearly. I mean, the only thing that I can say to John is, when he replied to me, I really, really wanted to uh, quote Babbage. You know, there's this famous Babbage quote, um, Confusion of Ideas by John Babbage. So they asked, or sorry, Charles Babbage. So they asked Charles Babbage, if you put into the machine wrong figures, and by the way, this is when Charles Babbage was first demonstrating computers. He was demonstrating a computing machine, like a counting machine. And they said, if you put into the machine wrong figures, will the right answers come out? And uh, his reply was, this is great. I am not able rightly to apprehend the kind of confusion of ideas that could provoke such a question. Right? And that's what I say to John, because he asks questions that are so confused. The same for Richard Mason. They'll ask these questions that are so confused that I don't even know what confusion of ideas. I can't even apprehend the confusion of ideas that led to them asking such a confused question. And I have 64.6 Mercury Exalted. I revel in confusion. I love it. It's the only reason I can do these videos, right? Um, because it's it's reveling in the confusion with the, when victory is already guaranteed. It's knowing, it's like, I'm not going to revel in confusion about something that's not clear-cut. This is a clear-cut case. It's not a relative case. Both John from Genetic Matrix and Richard Mason of Sidereal Astrology, extremely clear-cut cases where they are wrong. They are just quite literally wrong. And they're both manifestors, and they're both having a huge negative impact on people by not successfully informing, by not correctly informing. Richard Mason pretends that he follows true sidereal. He actually, I have screenshots of threads where people asked him about the variable width of the signs. And he goes in and he goes on to explain how Virgo is 39 degrees and Scorpio is 7 degrees and this and that. And he doesn't say anything about how, and then he even links them. They say, so please show me true sidereal astrology, which your true sidereal human design or cosmic human design, as he calls it now, is based on. And he goes, yeah, yeah, here it is. And here's a, and he sends them to all this stuff with variable width signs. But he doesn't observe variable width signs. And I had to corner him in three hours of grueling interrogation interview where I interviewed him live publicly on YouTube. And I had to corner him to get him to admit this fact because he just glosses over it. He's like lying by omission all the time. This is manifestors. They lie by omission. They lie by not informing, and they think they can get away with it because technically, legally, they didn't say a lie, but they're causing harm through lack of informing, and that's a form of lie. So, okay, um, in any case, just last little wrap up here. So this is kind of what I finished writing, and thank you again, Delilah, and I, I uh, look forward to seeing you at the conference this year. And um, so I kind of just finished it up by saying, the goal of time zones is to be able to know the correct universal time so we can query the NASA ephemeris and get correct planetary locations. He does this wrong, so he gets wrong planetary locations because his formula is wrong. Because he doesn't understand how it works, but thinks he does. If he didn't know, but had some humility, he could get me or someone else to fix this. A lot of people could fix this. We would just look into his code and we would submit a pull request on GitHub with a correction to his algorithm and using the time zone database instead of using his own latitude, longitude, thing. Uh, but instead, he calls us wrong. So anyway, he's wrong. Um, the funny thing is that his charts generate correctly some of the time, simply because most local time zones are determined by equal division of the ecliptic. So his formula works some of the time, making it even more annoying. And or he has some special cases in there because he, you know, I, I don't, I haven't seen his code. So I don't even trust when he says that he does an equal division of the latitude by latitude of the ecliptic. I don't even trust that that's what he's doing because he hasn't showed me his source code. That's simply what he's described to me. But anyway, uh, to finish it, I say, you can't really predict when it will work, when it won't. It works pretty well when there's no daylight savings time, so half the year, but it also works pretty well for some modern era time zones and poorly for older ones and for areas of time zones that changed. Bottom line, pretty well isn't good enough when we're talking NASA level accuracy. 
You know, we, we tap into a millisecond accurate star database. Why are we sending it the wrong data? Why are we an hour off when we're querying it? It's not acceptable in 2022. It's, it's accurate to the level of a millisecond. Why are we making these out, you know, off by one hour mistakes? In one case, we found he was off by two hours. We literally found a case where it was off by two hours. So not only can it be one off by one hour, it could also be off by two hours in some cases. I mean, get it together. I finished it up by saying, anyway, my chart's the same on genetic matrix and elsewhere, so I have no gripes there. But just about every week, I see people noticing their chart is different between genetic matrix and Jovian, and asking why. And for everyone who notices, 10 people don't notice, and they trust the chart he generated. And sometimes it has the wrong type, sometimes it has the wrong profile, sometimes it has the wrong dietary regimen, and so on. And given his total number of generated charts and the observed flaws, I estimate he has generated over 1 million wrong charts so anyway um yeah i don't like doing these videos you know i'm not like a hit piece youtube guy i'm just someone who cares about human design and i it really bothers me when i see people generating wrong charts when i see manifestors having negative impact uh through lack of informing so